I want to focus now on manufacturing. Look who's with us. Drew Greenblack. He is the CEO of Marlin Steel and a frequent guest on this program. Uh, Drew, welcome back. Uh, I've got my pet theory here. The way to bring manufacturing jobs back to America is to create uh, the situation where you've got very cheap electricity. Am I on track with the, a good idea there? It's a critical element. You know, electricity, energy in general, it's about, we're, we use about 40% manufacturers. So it's a huge input and it's a big impact the fact that we're having all this fracking, uh, natural gas exploration, it's really driving the price of fuel and energy down, and it's making a huge competitive marketplace advantage for American manufacturers compared to Korea and China and Europe, where they have much ex more expensive energy. So this we, is a we, big got, benefit look, the, for American manufacturers. Well, the president's whole energy policy is bring down the cost. D create it domestically, bring down the cost, get rid of the Paris Climate Accord, l encourage fracking. So do you see real progress here in opening up the energy market and getting juice costs down? Absolutely, because it's, again, a big input cost for a lot of factories. And, and these manufacturers, they're competing with Mexico, they're competing with China and Korea. And when their costs are higher, they're going to lose, and we're going to win more. And that's great for the American worker, and that's what I care about. This we morning, need more American manufacturing jobs. Yes, we you do. Know, the average wage yep. is $83,000 a year. So when energy whoa, costs whoa, whoa. are lower... That's, that's the average the, wage in your factories, your steel factories, $83,000 a yeah, year. Eight, that includes benefits. And if the factory is an exporter, they're averaging in the mid-90s. Okay. So it's a tremendous benefit for the American worker when energy costs are low because that really differentiates the American worker's okay. opportunity versus a Chinese or a Korean employee. It's I want fabulous. you to deal with this one for us also, Drew. Ivanka Trump is talking workforce development. Just roll tape and listen, please. There is a viable path other than a four-year college experience. So really investing in vocational education, skill-based training, there are six million available American jobs. So we're constantly hearing from sure. CEOs that they have job openings, but they don't have workers with the skill set they need to fill those jobs. Right. So it, really bridging that gap and, and bringing um, experience-based um, education to, to the forefront. Uh, Drew, I think Ivanka Trump is talking about apprenticeships. Your reaction? She, she's spot on. I mean, we have a, a disconnect. We have a big skills gap in America where we have colleges pumping out uh, students th that have uh, abilities that don't match the needs of American factories and American business in general. And also, not every high school kid uh, should go to college. Some, it's better for them to get a vocational trade. They'll do better. Uh, again, in manufacturing, you could be earning 60, 70, 80, 90 grand a year uh, without a college degree. This is a, a path for some people, not all, yeah. Yeah. and I think she's nailed it. And right now, the problem is, is that we have 40-something different government entities spending billions of dollars uh, in a, and it's diffused, and it's got to be organized and, and streamlined, and we got to get uh, college administrators, I'm sorry, high school administrators and guidance counselors to realize that a path for everybody <laughs> should be Figure including vocational tech. For and some we don't people. need student debt around some youngster's neck either. All right, Drew Greenblatt, thanks for joining yep. us. So appreciate it. I'm